Hi mate and welcome back to my World of Tanks channel. I'm Anton off to you as usual and today we'll be taking a look at this beauty here, the Churchill 7 tier 6 British heavy tank. This is a real beast of a tank that in the right kind of situation really has got the ability to carry games and it's basically got really really good armour. It's really slow and it's got a quite decent penetration, really accurate, very high DPM but low alpha damage gun. So if that sounds like the tank for you, stay tuned and I'll explain to you what the pros and cons of this vehicle are and how to play it. So yeah, if we look at the tech tree, we can see that it's stuck right here at tier 6 and it leads up to the Black Prince, you get it from the Churchill Mark 1 and then you can get the Carnarvon, the Conqueror and the FV215B which is why I'm playing this tank because I'm not really the kind of a fan of all these really slow, heavily armoured vehicles I'm really looking forward to getting these tanks like the Carnarvon, the Conqueror, the FV those tanks are really amazing I'm, I wasn't really looking forward to the Churchill 7 but I must say I really like this tank it's real good and I've had some real good fun driving it so let's quickly have a look at the stats to so find out why exactly this tank is so much fun first of all it's got 960 hit points that's a lot at tier 6 for example the KV-1S I think only gets 810 so that's a very very big hit point pool at tier 6 it weighs 40 tons which is not very heavy actually I mean it is heavy at tier 6 you can ram most tanks but you should not try to go for rams with equally tiered or higher tiered heavy tanks really because 40 tons is not all that heavy actually for a heavy tank driving those 40 tons of weight is only a 350 horsepower engine this tank is really really slow its top speed is 20 kph its traverse speed is 20 degrees per second that's really bad its turret traverse is actually fairly good with 30 degrees per second i mean it's not amazing but compared to the rest of the uh, maneuverability stats of this tank which are all quite let down really uh, the turret traverse is quite all right so yeah this tank is not very fast it is a really really slow lumbering machine and i'm going to quickly skip the armor for a moment because we're going to have a look at that in more detail in a second because that's really what makes this tank special <laughs> we're first of all going to focus on the gun now first of all if we look at the research we can see that you've got a choice of quite a few guns on this tank actually and you get a howitzer on this tank but at tier 6 a tier 5 howitzer just is not very good anymore so I'm just not going to look at this howitzer and then you get um, these 75mm guns and then finally the upgraded 77mm gun so these are basically the two choices of guns here and they're both very very similar yeah so you've got the 70 this is really weird because it says up here 77 millimeter but down here it says 76 millimeter we'll just call it the 77 millimeter so you've got the 77 millimeter on the right side and the 75 millimeter on the left side so the rate of fire is exactly the same on both the penetration is better on the 77 the pe the damage is also better on the upgraded gun the accuracy is the same the aiming time is exactly the same so yeah this gun's basically the better gun you want to use this gun but you already have got this gun here unlocked on the churchill one so you will be grinding out your experience for this gun here with this gun and this is not a bad gun you know it's it will do the job i'll show you again with this gun here mounted and it's not bad at all it can do the job and that's why this tank is actually quite a painless stock grind because this gun really is not bad at tier 6, it's not that much worse than the upgraded gun really and it will really prepare you for playing this tank with the upgraded gun because it's just very very similar. So yeah, just looking at these gun stats now, the rate of fire is really really good on a heavy tank, 14 rounds per minute, that's really good, that means this, round, this gun here pumps out shots basically every 3 seconds, the penetration is, well it's alright at tier 6, in tier 6 games you will be doing well with this pen, but at higher tiers than 6 you will be having problems because 148 well, that's basically tier 6 medium tank penetration. It's kind of comparable to, for example, the penetration of the American tier 6 medium tanks. It's kind of in that area. So it's alright at tier 6, but at tier 7 and 8, it's not all that good anymore. The damage is very, very low for a tier 6 
heavy tank 140 damage is really bad for example you get a tier 6 for kv1s that gets an amazing 390 alpha damage <laughs> okay of course it's generally agreed upon that the kv1s is overpowered but still 140 hit points alpha damage is not very good but combined with your great rate of fire that actually makes for quite a dpm your dpm on this tank is really really good probably one of the highest at tier 6 i'm not going to work it out right now but it is pretty good your accuracy also is really good at tier 6 0.36 in a tier 10 game that wouldn't be any good really but at tier 6 that's really really accurate so you can actually do so uh, put down some sniping or supporting fire in this vehicle and uh, you also get a 2.3 second aiming time which also is really good at tier 6 so the gun is actually well the gun is the good thing about this tank but also the bad thing it's basically in my opinion it's a medium tank gun so it shouldn't really be mounted on a heavy tank but it this gun and this tank it kind of works but still this is kind of a gun you should, would be expecting on a tier 6 medium tank so for example if you've been playing uh the cheeto for example or the sherman jumbo it's kind of a bit similar to those guns but it's better than the sherman jumbo's gun definitely but not by a lot so it just plays very similar like those guns so what stats have we got left 360 meters view range bang average at tier 6 that's most tier 6 tanks get that view range and signal range 550 is not very good really i mean at tier 6 it's acceptable but well it could be better so yeah, that's kind of took us through all of the stats except for the armor. And for the armor, I've got a new program installed on my computer, so we're going to look at the armor profile in more detail because the armor is really what makes this tank special. So let's head right in and have a look. So, this is the program I've been telling you about Tank Inspector, developed by the uh, Chinese development company Smelly River Software which is kind of a weird name, but the program's quite good. I heard about this program on the Mighty Jingles channel, and I downloaded it, so it's really good, I'm really pleased. Basically, what it does is it gives you all the information about your tank that, other, um, about your tank that the game doesn't give you. So, for example, you can go to this arrow here, you can see all kind of great stuff, like, for example, the damage per minute here. This is without modifiers, so without gun rammer and stuff, without BIA. But it's 2000, which is really good at tier 6. Also, uh, you can see right here, the maneuverability, for example, it gets a power to weight ratio of 8.59, which is really bad. So, yeah, there you go. That's kind of um, uh, stuff you can expect here. So, it's a really, really nice program. I can really recommend to download it. And if you want to, I'll be posting a link to this program in the video description, so check it out. Uh, I cannot recommend it enough, but it will really improve your ability in the game. So, yeah, right here we can see the armor profile of the Churchill 7. And if I mouse over the armor, you'll be able to see that in, on the right side here, an arrow will be going to the armor thickness. So, for example, this lower plate here has got 139 millimeters of armor thickness. But down here, where it says equivalent, that me that says what the effective armor thickness is. So it takes the angling into consideration, and that's what I find really useful. So. What you might find about the Churchill 7 frontal armor is it's really thick. So, for example, you get 139 millimeters of lower glacis armor, you get 152 millimeters on this strip of armor here, and then, for example, up here at the turret, you get 152 and even 203 millimeters. So, it is a very, very well armored machine. But the problem is that your effective armor thickness is not all that high, really, because there is hardly any angling going on here. Now you never really want to shoot a Churchill 7 up here because it's very well ang angled and usually you'll have better chances penetrating these parts of the tank than this part here. If you ever get the chance to shoot a Churchill 7 on this part of the armor here where it's 19mm thick or at this part here where it's 25 definitely go for it if you've got a 75mm gun or higher because then you will overmatch this armor. If you don't know what overmatching is, basically if the caliber of your gun is three times as big as the thickness of the armor, you will overmatch it and that means that your shell will go through no matter how thick the armor is. So if you even only see this little strip of the upper armor, shoot at it with a 75mm gun for example on the American medium tanks and you will penetrate every single time. 
definitely go for this part of the armor, that's a real weakness. Also, if the Churchill 7 is kind of below you because of some kind of terrain undulation or something, go for this bit of the armor here because you'll, in nearly any gun, be able to overmatch it. So if you're driving a Churchill 7, I would always recommend to angle your tank about this much. That will really increase your effective armor thickness. As we can see, the uh, side of the tank is still ricochet zone. That means you will not really be able to penetrate it because it's at a more than 70 degrees angle. And the front now has got nearly 200 millimeters of armor, as you can see, okay, 160 here. And this will even partly be 400 millimeters, so that's really, really good. However, what you always have to watch out for when you're angling this tank is if enemies hit right here, for example, or just here, they will be able to penetrate you most of the time. Now, I would usually be, yeah, angling my tank maybe a bit more even like this. Yeah, that, that will be really good. This is the ricochet then. Right here, you'll need 240 millimeters to penetrate. And yeah, if you hit this little bit here, you'll be able to penetrate with about 100 millimeters, but that's a very, very difficult zone to hit. And if you angle like this, your front is basically impenetrable for tier six guns. If you are an experienced E100 or mouse driver, you'll know what, exactly what I'm talking about if I tell you to also angle your turret in between shots because, or if you're taking a lot of fire, because your turret is somewhat boxy and you'll really be able to increase the effective armor thickness of your turret because the turret is just as strong as the hull really and not angled so you really want to angle your turret to if possible. From the side the church for 7 is a huge target and really easy to penetrate so you generally should not be uh, giving enemies your side and your rear obviously is really easy to hit too. So yeah this tank really is um you can only face your enemies front on. You should not ever really give them more than this amount of your side armor, really. And yeah, because of the bad traverse speed and maneuverability of this tank, it's very easy to get out flanked, so you really have to watch out for that. But I'll be explaining that when we talk about tactics a bit more. So yeah, let's quickly head back to the garage to take a look at um, tactics, crew skills, and equipment on this vehicle. So for tactics, where this tank excels is if you get into a city map situation, so for example Himmelsdorf, you go down the heavy street or you just go down one road, you keep driving towards your enemies and just keep the, your frontal armor basically facing towards them and just keep chewing them up with your great DPM on your gun. That's what this tank is best at really. Now this tank is also really good at guarding choke points because of its really good DPM and it's rapid firing gun and it's really really good armor now really you do not want to be engaging higher tier tanks than yourself in this vehicle because that they will basically make your armor look really silly and penetrate you every time and you will not be able to penetrate them usually so you really really want to pick on same or low tier tanks ideally you want to be engaging lower tier tanks or same to medium tanks with this gun and really just chew them up and low tier tanks or even a lot of same tier tanks won't have a chance of penetrating you frontally even if you don't angle uh, both games i'm going to show you later on will be these kind of situations in which i'm guarding choke points and you just do really really well, well in this vehicle also, because you're quite good side armor, side scraping is a really good option in this vehicle, especially if you angle your turret along with your hull. But you always have to watch out for your front weak spots, like this part here or this machine gun port are really easy to be penetrated. So yeah, always watch out for that. And a lot of people don't realize that, as I pointed out in the tank inspector program, you're really easily able to penetrate this part of the tank here with 75 millimeter rounds or higher. But uh, definitely go for this part of the tank if you can. Now, you always want to be in a kind of a city street situation where you've got houses on your left side and your right side, or you always want to have support by allies in this tank because if you're alone against lots of enemies on an open map for example you will be outflanked by very fast medium and light tanks and they'll just put shot after shot through sides and rear of your tank so you really really have to watch out and if you are in an open map I would play this tank as more of a support vehicle staying in the second line and supporting your allies also if you are in a 
tier 7 or 8 game, that's the kind of role I would take. If you are in a tier 6 game and it's a city map, then definitely go for it. Just lumber towards your enemies and just let them bounce off your armor and just absolutely punish them with your gun. Now, it doesn't necessarily have to be a city map. Any kind of map where you can basically get a way through to the enemy's base where your flanks are protected. I'm thinking of, for example, Monastery, where you can go down the right or the left flank, and it's very, very difficult to be outflanked in those maps. So definitely look for those kind of opportunities on maps, and you really have to plan your route carefully, because with the party weight ratio of 8.5 and a speed limit of 20, you will not be able to change your decision. So basically, if you've decided to go down a flank, you will be going there. You cannot change your mind later on, which is just too slow. Sometimes, the speed of this tank is its downfall because if you are basically in an end game situation it's really difficult to uh, clear up and just secure the game because you have not got the speed to zip around the battlefield like a medium tank maybe would and sometimes the lack of alpha damage can really hurt because you would basically have to you basically have to put three shots into an enemy to make as much damage as for example a kv1s would do in one shot so that can sometimes be a real letdown but generally this gun is really good and i really enjoy playing this tank so to maximize your performance i would definitely put vents and the gun ram onto this tank as on nearly any heavy tank really now for a third piece of equipment you've basically got the choice between the gun lane drive and the toolbox cannot mount vert stabs on this tank otherwise i'd probably go for vert stabs but the accuracy on the move is already really really amazing on this tank because of its bad speed the gun is really really accurate when you're moving or turning the turret now out of these two i would probably rather go with toolbox than enhanced gun lane drive the reason for that is because your tracks get blown off so so often in this tank if you look at it your track your track guards are kind of jutting out here and especially if you're angling or side scraping around the corner your tracks will be blown off time after time after time i wished so hard i had 100 percent repair crew on my entire tank that would be so good but it just i've only got 40 percent you really really need repairs so i'd probably go for toolbox but gld would also be good but your aiming time is quite Quite good anyway so you don't really need it all that much you absolutely want to have gun rammer and vents really those are the two you need to have also the spore liner wouldn't be all that bad an idea it can mount a heavy spore liner and you are a really really juicy artillery target as the top of your tank is armored really weakly and your really really slow artillery will often pick on you so uh, yeah spore line if you find that you've got big problems with artillery but i really find that after patch 8.6 there's not all that much rt around especially in low tier games and i would just recommend to go for vents gun rammer and toolbox or gld but i would prefer toolbox as for the crew skill i already kind of said it get repairs on your entire crew just do it you need it absolutely uh, you could swap it for brothers and arms if you carry this crew over to other tanks later on brothers and arms will be more important than repairs probably but if you just need this crew for this tank i would not bother about brothers and arms as first set of skills just get repairs on your entire crew swap for six cents on your commander then train repairs again uh, on driver and gunner well for the driver you definitely want to have clutch braking to improve your traverse speed because your traverse speed is really really bad in this tank for your gunner let's quickly see what we've got well yeah nothing really that important armorer would be good on this tank you don't really need snapshot all that much yeah you could choose between armor and snapshot i'd probably go for armorer because a lot of people seem to shoot at this little part of the tank here because they think there's a kind of a hole in the turret and it will be easily they will be easily able to penetrate so your gun gets knocked out quite often so armor would be a good idea actually on your radio operator um well i basically recommend to get situational awareness on any radio operator but signal boosting wouldn't be bad either but situational awareness is really important to get that and on your loader you obviously want to have safe storage because you want to have safe storage in any tank and maybe also adrenaline rush because this tank's got a very high hit point pull so yeah that you could get that but generally go for safe storage that's kind of it yeah uh, then later on get brothers and arms and stuff but generally repairs is the most important thing on this tank
<laughs> yeah, so I hope you kind of understood the garage part of this review and appreciated it. And that's head out to the games I've been announcing already and see how this tank performs in guarding choke points and assaulting enemy tanks front on, what it does best. So our first game is probably on the perfect map for this tank, Himmelsdorf, and I'm using the well, not the stock gun, but also not the best gun. This is the tier 6, 75mm, not the tier 7, 77mm. So it's kind of similar to that gun, but it's not the same. So I'm still grinding out the experience with the gun that the Churchill 1 uses. Now, this is an encounter battle, and really, for the Churchill 1, um, not Churchill 1, it's Churchill 7, uh, it would be better if this would be a standard battle. But what was going through my head right there was, okay, I could go for the hill, but first of all, what I forget and um, what I forgot to mention in the garage was this tank has got really, really bad gun depression and elevation angles. That means that I probably, first of all, wouldn't be able to combat very efficiently on the hill because I just couldn't hit the enemy tanks on the hill. And then once my team secured the hill, I wouldn't be able to very effectively slide down from the hill because this tank's gun depression is really bad. Right there, you can see that's the limit of the gun depression. It's literally awful. So. Yeah, that's a real problem. So I decide to go to the classic heavy street on Himmelsdorf right here, to the classic heavy, st heavy, oh gosh, heavy tank camp spot. There, I got it now. I forgot how to speak. Okay, so that's what I'm doing. I'm just basically, I'm just driving towards my enemies. And this is the kind of situation you really want to be in in your Churchill 7. With loads of low tier tanks, uh, tier 5 and 6 tanks, and even a tier 4 tank, just standing in front of you, just waiting to get shot at. And right here you can see the amazing rate of fire on this gun. So we're even able to penetrate the front of the Sherman Jumbo there, which is really good. And these tanks just keep on popping up in front of my gun, and I just put shot after shot through them. And right there, somehow, something went wrong. I think I, I well, I don't know, but somehow my uh, rectangle jiggled. And I pick up the first game, uh, the first, not the first game of the kill, the first kill of the game, uh, on the Marder 38T. So that's a good start. And now you can see this uh, Type T34 is thinking he's clever and trying to slank round. And right here you can see the Sherman Jumbo also gives up. They just realised that they cannot win against me in a front-on engagement. That is how strong this tank is. One tier six and one tier five tank are not able to beat this vehicle. So I just go hunting now and yeah, mess up this M4A3E2. So next we're going to try to take out that. Uh, if we would have been lucky, we would have been able to one-shot him. We left him on free health. Bit of a shame, but you know. So right there, you could see that was really poor driving for me. I should have angled more around that corner. But this uh, Sherman Jumbo drove really stupidly as well because he gave me a side. Now, really, I'm not sure if I should be doing this because I could be under a lot of sniper fire, but this is an encounter battle but, and a lot of enemies will be on the hills trying to snipe down at me here like that Hellcat. So really, I think this was the wrong decision probably. And right now this Matilda's flanking around, he wants to kill on me. Or well, at least some damage, he probably won't manage to kill me, but now you see he's got my attention and he will soon regret that. You can see this tank is really, really slow, especially when turning, so you really want to get clutch braking. And again, I fail to angle around the corner, but he still bounces, but I think he bounced at least, I'm not sure. But you can see we've got no problems penetrating the front of the Matilda. But still, I really should have angled there. That was a real mistake I did in this game. And I take him up. So now all the tanks that have managed to secure the hill and the enemy team are going to come round. And well, my role right here is now basically to occupy the tanks so that my teammate, uh, teammates can cap. Now also this French tank destroyer notices that it's, uh, realizes that it's pointless to engage me front on. And right here you can see I'm tracked. And at this point I didn't have any repair skills, no repair kit whatsoever on this tank. So you could see the repair speed was really long. And right now I just have to hope that uh, my team manages to cap out. And there was a Type T34 somewhere here, but apparently he's moved on. So I'm just trying to see if I can intercept any more vehicles coming down here. But it's not looking like it's going to be possible. So basically I've done all I can. And this, uh, I could have maybe got a shot in on that helicopter. But yeah, we won. We captured the base. I got four kills. And this was my first class mastery badge in the tank. I picked up just above 1,000 experience. 
I think it was uh, 1,000... 80 or something so yeah fairly decent game there lots of damage and i hope you enjoyed it but i've still got a second game with upgraded gun in which did even better so let's see that one as well so again we've spawned on a city map a very very favorable environment for the churchill 7 ensk great map for this tank and this time I've got the best gun. This tank's basically fully elited now, but I didn't have a repair crew yet, so yeah. Um, yeah, the matchup is really good. This is the kind of situation which you want to be in at Churchill. Top tier, big guy, and yeah, a lot of low tier tanks to kick around. But in this game, actually, there are lots of tier sixes. So yeah, but um, if we look for enemy team, most of the tier sixes are fairly lightly armored. The only two tanks of the enemy team where I could have problems penetrating them are the ARL and the Churchill 7 and maybe also the Sherman Jumbo but probably that should not be a problem. Now usually what I would do in my faster tanks is I would take position at these railway lines and try to get some shots off at the enemies trying to progress along to the city but in my Churchill 7 I'm not going to do that because it's just so slow that I basically have to go to my position straight away that I want to take up in the city because otherwise I won't reach it till the battle's over. So yeah that's just what I'm doing here. And right here you can see the really really sluggish speed, not speed, <laughs> speed of this tank. And um, yeah it's just it's really really slow. I by the way apologise for the somewhat bad graphics in this video, I've only got it on medium because somehow with my patch 8.9 replays the frame rate gets really hammered if I put it on maximum or high, so I have to put it on medium and uh, yeah I mean it's still alright but you know if you look at the top left corner it's only 24 frames per second right now so yeah that's the most I can get out of it basically without having to put the graphics on just unacceptably low settings. And right here you can see our amazing rate of fire allows us to secure the very first kill from our team in the game. And our team's not doing all that well really. The score's 1-3-3 and we've already lost 3 tanks, they've only lost 1. But I put a really massive shot in on the M4 there, tracking him in place and I keep going for his front drive wheel, keeping the track there. And I think he's not using the howitzer, so otherwise he could be doing some damage, I think. But you can see, again, we got tracked, so you get tracked a lot, because the tracks just kind of stick out in front of the tank. So I have to wait till it's repaired, because you don't want to really waste my repair kit this early in the game. And next to go for the EZ-8 there. I don't know why I didn't fire that shot, maybe a bit of a lag spike or something, I'm not quite sure. But somehow I just didn't pull the trigger. But here we go, here we go. Just roll towards the enemy and keep firing that gun of yours. That's the way you want to play this tank. Can we pick up the kill? Oh, come on, come on, come on. And yes, there we go. There you can also see the good aiming time and good accuracy allowed me to really take a very risky shot. Because for example, if it wasn't a KB1S with 0.46 accuracy, I would have had to risk to knock out my... Churchill 7 pal there by shooting that bad M4. And also, um, what I find with this gun compared to other tier 6 heavy tank guns with more alpha damage is that because your alpha damage is fairly low, you can really take those killing shots of enemies on very, very low health. Now, that might seem, sound like um, kill ceiling to you, but still, you know, sometimes you get these situations where in a KV1S and you would really like to pick up a kill, but it's only got like 3 health left. And you don't really want to waste your shot and go for your really long reload to pick up the kill. But on the other hand, you also have to kill him because he's otherwise going to knock you out, maybe. So you really don't have those kind of problems with this tank. Now, you can see that Churchill 7 very quickly we got a side armor to him and I still can't penetrate him. And, oh, I... I can't believe it. Did... Oh, my days. Did, did that look seriously just drive in front of my gun? I mean, okay, it might have been my fault, I was somewhat tunnel visioning there, I should have seen the looks coming if I had paid attention to the minimap, but still, basically, he should have not driven in front of my gun, but gone round and behind my tank. Oh no, like, but I'm on five kills really now, like, basically, I would be on five, but I got minus one, like, my one kill was subtracted from my, um from the amount of kills I've got now because I team killed that guy. So if that would have been a tier 10 replay, uh, patch 8.10 replay, 
I probably would have been able to hit that Hetzer because the shot would have gone through the wall, but as this is patch 8.9, that wasn't possible. And now all these tanks are here and I can just really put fire on them. And come on, give me the kill. Yes, there we go. Six kills now already. Okay, it says five, but it's really six. But I'm denied of my top gun by that Lux. Now, I'm not sure if that was my fault or his fault. Let me know in the comments what you think. But that really was not necessary. And I can't penetrate the Sherman Jumbo or this would be my top gun. Come on. Yes, okay, good. I get the top gun anyway. Seven kills in this game. Really, really good. Okay. And... Put another shot in the Chinu. Can I finish him off? I'm... How did that shot miss? Seriously? This, this could be a Radley Walters medal. If that looks, wouldn't have driven in front of me. I would still have to kill the Chinu, but I would have had a chance for Radley Walters if that looks hadn't been so stupid. Or maybe it was me who's stupid, I'm not sure. I really want to have this Chinu now. But the KP1S gets him before I do. Still top gun, although I got a team kill by mistake. So yeah, still a very massive game. And that's really check off after game stats to see exactly how well we did. So here we go. We got nearly 40,000 credits and 3.5k experience. But that was our times two for the first victory of the day. We also got a top gun, obviously, although we team killed somebody. So right here we can see we picked up one, two, three, four, five, six, seven kills. And if we look at the team score, we can see we dealt out 2,315 damage and managed to pick up 1.138k experience, which is a lot. You still have to note that this amount of experience was not enough to get me my mastery badge in the Churchill 7. So that just shows you how much experience you actually need to get to pick up a mastery in this T6 tank. So that means people are doing really, really well in this vehicle. And maybe if I hadn't killed the Lux, this would have been my mastery badge, but I'm not quite sure. I fired 30 shots, of which 26 hit and 21 penetrated. That just shows you the amazing rate of fire of this tank that I was able to pump up out 30 shots in this game. So, although only 60% of these shots hit, still I did quite a lot of damage. So, you can really take some very speculative shots in this tank that you could not take in, for example, a KV-1S or a T-150 or something. We received uh, 10 hits of which four penetrated only, so that means six ricochets. That's a 60% ricochet rate. That's really, really good. We received 1,240 potential damage, which is not all that much, really. We detected two enemies, damaged eight, destroyed seven, and even picked up one base capture point. Hooray! <laughs> yeah, so anyway, I hope you enjoyed this game. As you can see, with a premium account, we were able to run a lot of profit, and even without premium, we got quite a lot of money. So yeah, this tank actually is not a bad credit owner. And um, anyway, I hope you enjoyed the review and the gameplays, and I cannot recommend the Churchill 7 enough. If you like heavily armored, rapid firing assault guns, in some situations the tank can be really frustrating. For example, if you get into tier eight and seven games, or if you are on an open map, like for example, Redshire or Malinovka, this tank just really sucks, but if you get into maps like Himmelsdorf, Ruinburg, Ensk, any kind of map like that, you will really kick ass in this tank. This tank is really, really good in those kind of environments. And I hope I could showcase it to you in those kind of maps. So if you enjoyed this video, make sure to give it a thumbs up below or even sub to my channel. And I hope I'll see you out there on the battlefield. Bye bye.